I'm here with Rob Hardy and uh, we met on Twitter and it's been like, like I was saying earlier, brothers from a different mother. Um, we are both, Rob and I are both interested in how to do marketing from uh, a more, you know, like real, authentic, ethical, uh, you know, heart-centered place. And um, Rob, well, first of all, I'll, welcome. Great to have you here. Great to finally meet you. This is the first time Rob and I are actually talking face to face, but we've traded tweets and emails and things like that. Um, Rob, anything else you want to say about your background before we get into this? Oh man, there's a there's a lot there. Other than yeah. to say, like the broad character arc of my journey thus far has been going from total. I'd say direct response marketer. Like I got really yeah. in the weeds on oh, yeah. copywriting and funnels and conversions and all the all of it. Yeah. Um, and over the last year or two, um, mostly through doing work on myself and working with a coach and all sorts of stuff, yeah. I've yeah. kind of realized that I hate all of that and I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing it. And so it's been it's been interesting just sort of like reinventing my my relationship with marketing after being so deep in the weeds. Um, yes in the old way, in the coercive, manipulative way for years. Totally, totally. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So it's great to great to meet you and um, grateful to our common Twitter contact, Gil Friend, uh, who I know from the green sustainable business days. I was I was involved in that that niche. Well, niche. I, I mean, I was I went to got an MBA in green sustainable business uh, years ago, and uh, we met each other. Anyway, what we're here to talk about, though, you and me, is um, uh, I am in the process of choosing software to migrate my website, migrate my website, email list, and then my courses into, and my affiliate system as well. So um, I, you know, I have like at least four good choices. I'm looking at Kajabi, which is the industry standard. You know, most people have heard of Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I. I'm also looking at Simplero, which um, I'm really enjoying. I, 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 the founder, it's Simplero. What's amazing about it is that it's, it's owned by one person. <laughs> it was founded yeah. and still owned by just one person. So instead of like, you know, you know, it's, it's a benevolent dictatorship, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and the guy is relatively approachable. Like I was, I've been in touch with him and he's been, you know, I, I've, I, I like the fact that, you know, he, he even invited me to be part of the, um, I guess the advisor team or something. And I said, I would be honored and grateful if I did choose some Playero, you know, to be, so it's like, I liked how approachable and just how human the, the, the not, not just him, but the customer service. And then I'm also considering um, Zendler because new Zendler, because mm -hmm. that's what some of my clients have recommended. And then Podia, P-O-D-I-A is mm -hmm. a, kind of an up and coming one that several of my clients said, hey, you should look at this one. So it's like, but so, you know, what I'm probably going to do, I, I mentioned earlier, is to um, set up a short course on each of these four and a, and a simple website so that I can experience from, 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 the, um, from the inside what it's like. Mm -hmm. But you have um, been looking at software, I mean, you've been choosing software for a long time. And you mentioned that you had some ways of deciding or thinking about how to choose mm -hmm. software. And I wanted you to share that and we can have this conversation. Oh, man, there's so many directions I could go here. But yeah. One of them I'll say is that a lot of my obsession with software over the years has been an elaborate coping and procrastination mechanism to <laughs> sort of like leads me away from the actual work of yeah, you know, right. shipping things, making offers, being vulnerable, yeah. um, testing and all, all of that. Um, and that, that was sort of the game I played through a lot of like 2017 and 18 in my business is like I... I, yeah, it was, it was a way for me just to sort of like jump around and feel like I was being productive and being like, yo, I'm upgrading my, my business systems and I'm going to have the best tools and this is going to be great. When in fact, I was just running away from the things that mattered. And my business oh my wasn't God. actually, it wasn't complex enough to need a lot of the tools that I was thinking about. And I didn't, I didn't need complex automation and segmentation right. and, and not like yet. all of that. Yeah. 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 You know, what, yeah. what I mean, this is so true for a lot of people who are, um, who are doing work that 
uh, I say, like purpose, purpose work or like the work that feels very meaningful to them. I, I say whenever we encounter purposeful, uh, you know, when, when we're working on a purpose project, um, it's easy to run away because there's the fear of failure and, uh, and, and it sounds productive to be studying whether it's business systems or productivity tools. I spent a long time <laughs> jumping around productivity tools because I thought, you know, that that was, that there was going to be a perfect tool. And I found out, oh my God, all of them have flaws and all of them have yeah. benefits. But so go ahead. You, you, you looked at all these different things and you've of course learned about how to, hmm. how to think about that. Yeah. Well, so I think the first heuristic that I like to think about is like there is there is a clear division between like all in one tools. So you've got like Kajabi right. and Simplero and right. the one I nearly yeah. migrated to is called Kartra. Um, yes. Oh, right. That's basic, another one. Yeah. That, that would be a fifth one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what you're on to, now. No, no, no. I okay. so I actually I actually I went into Kartra for maybe like three or four months and it was yes. right after they they launched. So it oh, wasn't. Okay. I don't know. I think this was 2018. So they weren't like fully baked yet. They still had a lot of the pieces there, but the thing that I kept running into is that every individual piece or module of it was, was mediocre in some way. Like, cause uh, I, like I used and loved convert kit for years. And like, it's my, right. like I convert kit is just my jam. Then I go into Kartra and it, you know, it does a lot of the same things, but it doesn't have the ease, the intuitive use that the, yeah. um, yeah, it just, it just didn't, I don't know. It was, it was clunky. like a Marie. Yeah. It was super clunky. And like, it sounds like a silly heuristic, but like to Marie Kondo things is like, it didn't spark any joy. Like I just hated being in there and it was. Of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, of course. When, you know, and it was the same. Yeah. It's the same yeah. with like the landing page builder. It was just right. really clunky, unintuitive. All the templates were kind of dumb looking and like, and like another aspect of it is um, Kartra, they go really hard into the direct response stuff. Oh, They're, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's um, that's because the founders, right? Or, or like yeah. the founding team was kind of came yeah. out, out of that world. Yeah. Well, and, and like, that's the thing is like, it was even like the way they marketed that platform was even too aggressive for me in the early wow. days. Now, now um, be before we go further, like you said, you've said that direct response twice now. And I think... Mm -hmm. I, I I understand it, but some of the folks who are listening or watching might not get it. What's your definition of it? How do you how do you describe that? Yeah, I think I would I would say the the central conceit of direct response is about conversion. It's about measuring the right. crap out of everything. Yes. Um, and like on the exterior, it looks like you know a lot of the a lot of the really hyperbolic copy, like super long form sales pages yes. and countdown timers, yes. and funnels and upsell sequences yes. and yes, um, things that are are. I I don't know. It's about it's about driving as much short term revenue as possible is what it comes down to. Is how how can we go from first interaction to as much revenue as possible as quickly as possible? Is yeah. the, Direct, the goal of direct response marketing. Direct yeah. response from even a stranger who has just glanced at your website. They should spend as much as possible as soon as possible. <laughs> so, yeah. so okay, you 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 found uh, Kartra at those early years. Now I'm sure it's upgraded quite a bit since then to be clunky, and um, it had that direct response ethic, which you know neither of us enjoy. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I was, I was working with a client at the same time. Cause I was doing, okay. um, I was actually doing their copywriting and they built their okay. whole, their whole business in Kajabi. Right. Um, so through 2018 and 19, I was in there constantly building okay. out sales pages. Like so that you was, have a lot of experience with Kajabi as well. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like, I think the same thing applies is like Kajabi in 2022 is probably different from Kajabi right. in 2019. Yeah. But my experience was the same. It was like, this is, mm. this is. There's a lot here, but it's all really deeply mediocre and half baked. And my ultimately, what I came down to for my business is I want to enjoy the tools that I use. Yes. Um, and for me at the time, you know, it was like convert kit. Yes. Um, I had a I had a Squarespace site, which I don't use right. anymore. Right. Um, I had a I was built like landing pages and stuff in lead pages, which is yes. was pretty good. And then, you know, like a couple other things is like I process payments and build 
carts and funnels in a in an app called Thrivecart. Thrivecart um, is is actually um, it's been mentioned by some of my people too. And uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. And I so that was the philosophy I came down on is like I don't I don't necessarily mind spending a bit more money, right as long as I'm like enjoying the tools that I use and they create the kind of experience that I want both for myself and my yes. customers and the people who interact with me. Um, so that's one of those heuristics is like, there, there are trade-offs you make in that. Cause then right. like it then becomes a pain in the ass to tie yeah. things together with Zapier. Yes. And like, it is. And like, by the way, know. you're, you're one of few people who actually says that correctly. <laughs> Most people say, people say like Zapier. Zapier is usually one most yeah. people. And of course, I learned from them. They, they try to educate everybody. Zapier, like happier. You know, it's like, oh, that's right. And then each thing is, each thing is called, a, each automation is called a zap, not a zape. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yes, yeah, Zapier. Yeah. That, that's the direction I've gone for all these years is mm. I, I had the same thought you had, which is the all-in-one systems suck. Um, because they basically try to check all the boxes and they do it mm -hmm. poorly. Um, so why not use the best of everything and just stitch it together with Zapier? Um, but uh, so obviously I, I've, I've gratefully grown a good business doing that, except my course delivery system has mm -hmm. been mediocre at least um, I know it hasn't been great because I basically <laughs> I basically put my course videos on YouTube unlisted. Mm -hmm. I put it in the playlist, unlisted playlist, and then I when people sign up for my course and landing page, web page doesn't matter, just a web page with a PayPal button. They buy it. Zapier says, "Hey, there's a new sale. I have programmed this. Oh, if this sale says this course, then please put them into this Mailchimp tag." And Mailchimp, mm -hmm. I have an automation with a Mailchimp. This is okay. Send them these access links, and the access links brings them to a Google, YouTube playlist and a and a Google Doc with resource, you know, links a resource, you know, mm -hmm. uh, written written resource. And people go, George, course content's great. It's just I wish I could find all your courses in one place. Yeah. Over, I mean, I've I've heard that same feedback for years, <laughs> and now that I'm running. Um, essentially I'm running a year long course right now, the longest course I've ever run. And those people are like, and the course ironically is about productivity mm -hmm. and simplification and things. And those people are like, George, it's getting overwhelming. I mean, we're, we're, we're like two months into it and I've got module after I'm like, Oh my God, this is a one year course. They're, they're going to, they're already saying it's too much. And month two, it's going to be insane as I keep going. So I'm like, I have to, for the sake of these students, I have to move it onto a step-by-step -step platform, which is why I'm now looking at course platforms and looking at course platforms. Like if I'm going to look at course platforms, maybe I should now just go with an all-in-one because I'm sick of my website um, because my website's Weebly. Yeah. And they sold out to Square like three or four years ago and they stopped development cold. There's not been a single new feature for the website in three, four, maybe five years, actually. And it's so disappointing. And so, and then, and then number two, MailChimp sold out to Intuit yeah. a year, a year ago or so. But MailChimp has stopped development at least for a year. I mean, I, I, I yeah. just felt like it to me. I, I was with MailChimp in the early days and it was really exciting. They were coming up with new stuff all the time. And then they like gradually over the years, you know, now it's like, now it's buggy. Even the spell check, it doesn't work anymore. I mean, this is crazy. This is insane. I'm trying yeah. to send an email. I click spell check and it's broken <laughs> and they think it's okay. And they think that, I mean, I can't believe they yeah. allow that. But so anyway, don't go even, ahead. Go. Don't even get me started on MailChimp, man. Okay. It's one of those pieces of software that I've had to use and yeah. work through. Cause like, like I was setting up email, email systems for clients for, for years. And it just, yeah. and I, I don't know. I think ConvertKit has spoiled me in a lot of ways is mm, because it is, right. it is, just far simpler to do the basics. And it's also far simpler to, you know, get in and build a sequence and tag and segment and automate and all these mm. things. Um, whereas even, even just sending a broadcast email in MailChimp, you have to click through like yeah. 12 different screens and <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's right. a wild, wild piece of stuff. Anyhow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where I was going. With that. So the heuristics, I mean, the first one was about the all in one. Um, Okay, yeah. so what are your well, continuing thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 are are you the, saying that we should not go in all go with all in one? 
I would investigate it. Well, so the other heuristic is I tend to like, I just want to do business with people and companies that I vibe with at this point. Mm. Like, so when you were talking about the Simplero guy yeah, owning all of his business um, yeah. and being like having good customer service, yes. inviting you in, like, like it might not be the best tool of the bunch. Cause I don't right. know, Kajabi has raised a ton of money. And like, of so have a lot of these companies, Yeah, but I, I'm at a point where I would rather vote with my dollars and put it towards companies that, that, are, that share my values. Um, 100%. and if, if, and that, and I don't know, like that's, that's partly why I'm with mighty networks, even though like mighty yeah. networks has raised a bunch of money. Um, I get like a good they, feel from mighty networks too. Like I, yeah. like from the early days, I mean, in fact, in the early days of mighty networks, I, I was in touch with the founder as well. I could have been on some advisory team or something like that. I just, I probably should have gone in that direction because they were really, they were really, I was still, you know, into my Facebook group stuff, which I still use. But, um, yeah. but yeah, this is why this second heuristic is really good. I, I t- there's no reason there's, there's no wonder we're kindred spirits. I mean, cause I, I'm, you and I are, yeah. Cause this is why I'm like, if I were to choose today, I would totally go with Simplero because of how accessible the founder is to, for me mm-hmm. and how, how, you know, I, I've asked him point, point blank, Hey, are you going to sell? And he's like, Nope, not going to sell because I've seen what happens with software when they sell. I care about the product. I care about the mission. So I'm not selling. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, you're right on. And, and then I'm, I'm afraid of Kajabi because you know, they, they are on that path where I, I could see that they could sell um, in the, you know, in the not too distant future. So yeah. my, that was my dog making an agreement. <laughs> he's he's yeah. somewhere. Yeah. I've got a cat back there. who's probably yeah. just snoozing. And <laughs> uh, so that, like, honestly though, like, I'm like, it, I think ultimately it comes down to trade-offs and all of these yes. things is like yes. understanding which, which trade-offs you're willing to make and then just accepting it. Cause you, you mentioned it earlier, like no matter what platform you choose, no matter what bundle of, of solutions, there will always be things that are irritating and nitpicky and that don't work the way you expect them to. There will Ooh. always be things where you have to create silly, obnoxious workarounds, um, and like, that's, that's how it is for mighty networks right now for me is like, they're, mm. they're like, you've, you've gone into my membership. Like it, like I, it's, I, I want to say I, I, I bought into your membership because I like what you're up to. And I was pleasantly surprised uh, that you were using mighty networks and your course delivery is really nice. I really like it. I, I, that's yeah, no, I, I, I got, I, I bought it. I got it. I'm like, I like this now. I'm like, the only reason I'm not considering my networks is because it's not an all in one because because yeah. i need to move email lists and website so i'm like mm. if i'm going to move those two what am i going to do go to wordpress i could but i would like it to be on one system if possible because i'm trying to model in a way where i could recommend this to clients too and wouldn't mm. it be nice if it was all one system but anyway so so how you've enjoyed my networks mm. Yeah. Well, so I'll just, I'll just share like my current tech stack for everything. Sure. Sure. My, my website and the front end of everything I do now is ghost. I'm not sure if you're oh familiar with gosh. ghost. Oh my gosh. I was looking at ghost a couple years ago, like, like last year actually. So I didn't go with it because it felt too techy for me. Uh Oh, my, uh, my microphone is cutting out. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, I can. I know. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was really weird. Yeah. Um, so you yeah. use ghost and you like it. I love it. I, wow. I have a freelance developer who, I don't know, I char- he charges me like 35 bucks an hour um, okay. to go in and like tweak some code when I want changes. Nice. But the reason I love Ghost yes. um, is that it, there's enough power there that, right. you, know, it, you know, it ties into Zapier. It's got like webhooks and an open API. Nice. It's independently, okay. it's independently owned. It's open right. source. Yes. So, yes. Um, a, I, a lot I, of the good yeah. features of WordPress when WordPress wasn't bloated and hacked mm-hmm. all the time. And it's, it's beautiful. Like, yeah, it sparks that's so much freaking right. joy for me. That's, that's the ethic of it. And, and like, that's the thing is like, I just like, I'm at a point where I, I want to do business with companies I like with tools that I enjoy using that also, cause like I, I spent a year trying, maybe not a year, I think maybe like eight months trying to build my site on Webflow, which what's Webflow? Webflow. 
is basically like if you took Photoshop okay. and turned it into a web design tool. Oh, wow. Okay. Like it is, it gives you unlimited control and customization options over every last little pixel. So it's, it's really meant for designers. Is it by Adobe or what, who's it by? Who's it? No, it's, uh, I think Webflow is its, is its own company. It's oh, okay, worth okay. checking out for anybody yeah. who wants yeah. like to meticulously control things. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I found was one, like the CMS, the content management side of it sucks. Like yeah. okay. it just is, uh, is tedious and unenjoyable and um, just but, very, but ghost, very funky. Ghost you're, you're liking, the oh, CMS. Ghost I love. Okay. And the other thing is, is when I have unlimited options for tweaking and customizing and right. pixel peeping and whatever, yeah. um, there's a part of my brain that will just go do that, that will oh. want to make little changes to my website instead okay. of focusing on content. Whereas, right. whereas Ghost is that, that perfect middle ground between customizability mm. and simplicity, where it, it, gives me, it's, it gives me constraints. Like really all I can do in Ghost is go in and create new posts and pages. So I love that. I love smart constraints that allow us to, well, express our purpose without getting mired in the oh my God, there's these 10 options I haven't used. And, and, yeah. and, and what maybe I should, you know, it's that guilt, that the feature guilt. Um, so, so would you recommend Ghost to people? So the, I, like I said, I, I looked at Ghost. The reason I didn't go with it is as I started taking the first steps, I'm like, oh no, this is too tech savvy. They're just too techy for me and probably my clients. But how do you, I mean, it's, you sound like you're techy enough to, to do it, but how do you, how do you manage I, that? Like you so said, you have, a, you, have a, you have a tech person. Yeah, I, well, I have a tech person. I think the the tool has improved by leaps and bounds in okay. terms of customization options that are like okay. built in that anybody okay, cool. can do. I think Since I looked at I, it maybe two yeah. one to two years ago. I forget now, but it was it was a yeah. it was a little while ago. Okay. Well, so it, it's worth another look now. Okay. And it's also like there's also just like the theme or like the marketplace of themes has sort of exploded. Ah, okay, that's helpful. so you can so you can build like a really beautiful site, and most of yeah. them have their own little customization options. And yeah, like if you want to do deeper customizations, you'll need to get into yep. code. And okay, there's a so bunch of developers. Ghost who can help. versus WordPress. What would you say there? Mm -hmm. What's what's your? Oh, uh, ghost, base? ghost all day, every day. Well, okay, ghost, ghost. <laughs> Why? For, like for for writing. Um, yeah. Well, for, for one, it's just a way more delightful place to spend one's time. So enjoyable. I, very yeah, good. Very important. WordPress fills me with existential dread. Yeah. I worry yeah. every time That's, that I go to- This is why I haven't gone into WordPress because I've looked at, yeah. of course, I've looked at many times over the years. My clients, many of my clients are on WordPress. Of course, I'm in there sometimes. I'm like, what the hell? I can't believe people, I can't believe this is the industry standard. Mm -hmm. And so. it- and that's the thing is like, it, it is a very robust ecosystem. You can of do course. things with of course. WordPress yeah. plugins and through combining them in different ways that like, I don't know, it, it, it again comes to trade-offs, but yeah, ghost is, ghost is more than enough for me. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, so we text that ghost and then, and then what's your, yeah. and then convert kit. Yep. Convert kit is, um, yeah, it's interesting because ghost also sends emails. Like I use it to send, oh, um, okay. just like the full version of new articles that I publish. Right, right. But then I use Zapier to take everybody into into ConvertKit as well, okay. so that I have so that it's really easy for me why to send to like just paid you, members. Why do you mm -hmm. use ConvertKit and not just the Ghost email system? Well, for one, there's no automation in the Ghost email system. Okay. Um, so if I like, and I actually don't have that many sequences right now. Yeah, I understand. For, me neither. Yeah, but. I don't know. Like I, and I do plan to do more sequences later. Like we could can talk you about make my... it automatable with Zapier and ghost? I don't know. Sequences. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have to look at the zaps available for ghost, but you're, you're getting me thinking my, my goodness, you're, you're really getting me thinking about, about ghost again. So, all right. Sec very important question. Could you deliver courses in ghost? Yeah, probably. I mean, so the ghost has built-in membership features. Okay. So there we go. All um, right. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Like, so built-in membership features. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you like natively with ghost, you could sell one-off courses. I think it would either be, it would be like an all or nothing kind of option, or I don't know. Like there's, there are tiers in ghost now. 
but wow. it's more meant for like membership publications. Sure. Where, okay, fine. Um, yeah. But if you wanted, you could Jerry, and it's not even Jerry rig. You could just like set up a, a page a, for a course, page. put it. Yeah. And put it behind the membership paywall and then right. embed the videos on there and boom. Yeah. Like, but but the, the, the problem, the problem is, uh, you know, let's say Mary uh, is a student and she has bought course A and C, but not B. Yeah. yeah. Not ghost is not an ideal solution for that. Right. Not, yeah. And, and Mary and wants that's... to log in and say, where are my George Cow courses all in one place? I want to see, I want to log into georgecow.com, whatever, and just see course A and C because I bought those. But obviously I don't, I know I don't have access to course B. That, that's the single problem. Mm -hmm. That's why courseware exists, I guess. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that brings me to what, I mean, it brings me to Mighty Networks, which is okay. sort of become the entire back end of my business uh, where, okay. yeah, um, yeah. And, and this for me is the area where I actually think the all in one thing, because it's, it's not all in one, but it is right. a really, really capable course platform. Like I actually think it's better. It's better than Podia. It's better than Teachable. It's more cool. intuitive than, um, okay. and it's also like, but it's also, it's a community platform. Yes. So my thinking here is that because I I've tried doing like trying the best like to just get the best platform in both yes. of these categories the best yeah. course platform the best community platform and then yes. tie them together. But I think, well, for one, that causes friction. Like people actually have to jump back and forth, and right. they have to have separate logins and yes. like all of this. Exactly. Um, but I actually think there's some there's some real magic to housing these two things in the same place, right? Because the the courses themselves, yes, they become more social. It's easy for people right. to leave comments under the lessons. It's easy for people to shoot messages, like support messages to me yes. straight from the lesson. Yes. Um, and that social side makes the course itself more interesting and valuable. It makes of it course. easier for now, students for, to interact with each other and me. How would you, oh, give me one second here. All right. So have, how would you compare Mighty Networks course delivery versus Kajabi? I mean, I think, I think Kajabi is more flexible, um, mm -hmm. especially, especially in terms of design and in terms of, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's really hard to say. Like, I think, I think Kajabi is probably a superior course platform because that's, that's really what they started as. Like right. that was their bread and butter yeah. like six, seven years ago. Um, well, of course, I mean, we have to say, well, what aspects are, 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 are superior because when I started going through your course materials in your Mighty Network um, membership, which, by the way, folks, I'll link it below because I think it's worth looking at and you all might want to join me in, in Rob's membership. Um, I, it was a great exp I, I actually liked your membership exp or course experience more than mm. the, the Kajabi courses I've taken. I haven't taken that many. So yeah. there may be others who have designed it better because that's what Kajabi is more flexible in that way. OK, so let me ask you this then. Um, the fact that you're you're using ConvertKit separate from Mighty Networks has that been a problem in terms of CRM, like you know, uh, tracking yeah. people and 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 their their engagement with you. I have, I think I've largely given up on the notion of trying to track people. Like, Interesting. Like if okay. if there like if I do have a single source of truth, it's ConvertKit. Um, okay. Because Mighty Networks is synced to it and Ghost is synced How to is it. How is Mighty Networks synced to it? Broadly speaking, it's just and actually, and I don't know that it's it's Mighty Networks is necessarily synced to it, but I know I know who's in what course. Um, so it's more that my my checkout system sure. is synced to it. So okay, okay, yeah, um, who's in what course? Yeah, that's so, that's essential. So it gives me it basically just gives me an overview of how many active members do I have? How many lifetime? How many people have churned? How many people are in this course or this course or this course? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, but beyond that, like there's so much, like for a lot, a lot of years, I got deep into the weeds on segmentation and automation and trying to, yeah. like, I don't know if you follow Brennan Dunn at all. Um, um, I've of heard a, of him, but no, not, not much. He's yeah. just like a wizard magician okay. of email. It's okay. just like the, the yeah. most... <laughs> Yeah, the most magical person I've I've seen in terms of this stuff, but it it's so complex and so right. deeply nerdy and technical to make yeah. his magic happen that yeah 
yeah. I've realized that I don't want to play those games. Mm. I don't want to have to learn how to write complex liquid code and, Oof. and build out the, like, right. I just, so yeah. at, at this point, I kind of just use convert kit very, very simply. Um, have you heard of mailer light? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've used okay. it. It's good. Oh, you, you have. Okay. How do you compare those two? Because my some of my clients are really liking Miller Lite. Um, of course, some some love ConvertKit as well. And then there's Active Campaign. I mean, God, there's, there's, there's too many so choices. Many. Too many choices. But yeah. but how would you compare Miller, Miller Lite? I mean, I think I think ConvertKit is more powerful um, okay. if you really care about the power user features. Yeah. But for the basics, like Miller Lite does the same things, and it's cheaper. Um, yeah. Yeah. The reason, and the reason I'm still with ConvertKit, which I think I've been on ConvertKit since 2016, um, wow. is that I love the company and I love the founders. Okay. I, they, so, they're so creator go. focused where, you know, like active this campaign is, this is, is important is, uh, I don't know what they are. Drip went uh, into like whole, into like e-commerce right. CRM stuff. That's the, that's like, the problem with MailChimp. They, they went in that direction where it's like, yeah. they don't care about the, the email newsletter that they started mm -hmm. with as much anymore. So okay, so this is this is really good to hear um, that you have a good feeling about the convert kit founders oh, that they're yeah. they're they're dedicated to the mission of this. Okay. And interestingly, convert kit's becoming a bit more all in one. Like they released um, some commerce, right. not 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 all in one, all in one, but right. you can use it to sell natively, build landing pages. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. They have, and then obviously everything on the, yeah. the back end, you can use it for a paid newsletter now. Right. Um, wow. Okay. Huh. So. Yeah, I and I I don't use eighty percent of what ConvertKit does at this point. Okay, but I I love the company and yeah, um, yeah, will probably stay forever. Okay, that's that's any other tech stack you wanted to mention? Hmm. I mean, there's ThriveCart. Um, you still use it? I do. It's okay. um, is that your shopping so you, cart? Then? You yeah, it's my shopping cart, and you've okay. you've seen my my checkout pages. They're kind of sure. goofy. Yeah. Um, they usually. Like for my membership, I have it set up so that you can, right now it's $50, $100, $200, $500. Right, right, right. right. Um, any, any of those options gets you the exact same, same benefits, right? right? It's, yes. it's a, choose a choose a price that feels good, yes. that feels fair, that feels... Yes, um, yes. Mm -hmm. And like, that's one of those things that you can't really do natively in, in Mighty Networks, in okay. ConvertKit, in, I any, see. in Ghost. But if it, was um, this, if it was just one price, you could do that within... What, if it was just one price, which of those platforms would you do this do, do your shopping cart in? Ghost, hmm. Mighty Networks, or ConvertKit? <laughs> I would probably still use ThriveCart because oh. I like to get really... I would like to, I like to get really... Um, I don't know, just like cheeky and fun with my cart copy and things okay. like that. Yeah. Um, and so I can like customize the design and the I copy and, and all of that. Yeah. And also Thrivecart is still a lifetime deal. I, like I think you pay like six oh. or seven hundred bucks okay. and you get the tool for life. And I okay. I think I bought it initially in 2017. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um yep. and they continuously upgrade it and add yep. new features yeah. and and, and, um, and speaking of the lifetime versus subscription, um, Mighty Network, Ghost is also really a good deal, right? Is it Ghost Lifetime or what is it? No, Ghost Ghost is actually kind of, so, and that's the oh. thing, like oh. Ghost is kind of pricey for the, the official version where they oh. take care of hosting and email and everything okay. for you. Yeah. Do you recommend you that? Can, I don't. Um, huh. And this is a whole other conversation. Yeah. Because yeah. you can also, since it's open source, you can like, Go set up your own hosting on like yeah. in like Digital Ocean, then, and then, then, it, then up it, like it gets Mailgun complicated. And, and I I did that at first, and I ran into a bunch of tech issues, and like of my course. site went offline, and like yeah, was like, that's what wow. I'm afraid of. Yeah, <laughs> I went to Ghost Ghost Pro, the official version. Okay, which which is good, but their their pricing basically disincentivized me from ever importing like my old email list into it because I had like a six thousand person email list right that I wanted to import, but it would have taken my cost from, I don't know, like 400 bucks a year to 1700. Wow. Just from that one import. Wow. Um, okay. And it was, it was just like one of those nah dog. Yeah. I don't want to do that thing. Right. So right now I use a, it's like a third, I don't know if you're familiar with the WordPress ecosystem, like there's managed hosting. Right. Bluehost um, or. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. like premium version. I use a site called, um, or a service called midnight. 
I think it's getmidnight.com or .co okay. or something like that. that <laughs> good, 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 good uh, branding with Ghost. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, it's, uh, and it's like that perfect halfway. They take care yeah. of hosting and email mm-hmm. and security and yeah. updating Ghost and like uptime monitoring and like all these technical things. Yeah. Um, and it's priced like kind of halfway in between doing it yourself and Ghost Pro. And okay. then there's no limit on things like members and whatever. So it's, right. it ends up being substantially cheaper. For me and also also i think it's a little bit faster and more flexible and i can invite teammates and have all these other things that okay those pros official pricing was yeah 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 just it felt restrictive to me um, right okay so um of course we could talk about this stuff all day and forever <laughs> um I, I i would like to wrap it up uh and just say thank you for kind of <laughs> introducing yet more options for, for me to yeah. consider <laughs> i i worry that i just left you with more questions than answers no but. no no no. but it's okay because i yeah I, I i've given myself the whole year um to, to make this decision we're in you know march early march right now so um i am yeah i'm i'm gonna take my time with it i'm i, I i'm hoping i'm optimistic that when I launch, relaunch my um, group programs for, for the coming year, it'll be on the new platform, but I will be exploring for the next, you know, at least six plus six to nine months. So um, it's okay. I'm going to try, I'm going to try out all the ones that are highly recommended from my people and including you. So yeah, I'm going to look into mining networks again, and uh, I'll look at ghost again. Um, Which means I'll consider the not all in one (laughs) again. Uh, because I, I, I have that as my core um, instinct as well. It's just that I'm thinking my, my decision is complicated by um, thinking about my clients and, and what would be most recommendable for them. So yeah. l- let me ask you this, like um, if you were to recommend, and we can end on this question, if you were to recommend a, either a tech stack or a single solution, mm-hmm to somebody who is a, well, just like a solopreneur, those doesn't have a team, you know, maybe open to hiring, just like you said, a $35 an hour tech person every now and then, not like, you know, daily, but uh, monthly or maybe once a week, an hour a week or something like that. Um, someone who's not, su- who is less tech savvy than you, mm-hmm. what would you recommend? So I, I, like I, my brain goes in different directions, but yeah, I think yeah. if somebody's primary thing is writing um, and they want to put some of their writing behind a paywall, like Ghost mm-hmm. is the best thing around. Okay, cool. Just hands Great. down. All right. Um, and would you would you recommend Ghost for, Pro? Probably. As, okay. For somebody just starting out, like I think it's yeah. probably the best bet. Okay. My my circumstances were unique. Um, yep. That's why I went elsewhere. But yeah, yeah Ghost fine. Pro is great. For somebody who's doing courses. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say. I would probably recommend Podia. Like oh, Podia's, interesting. Yeah. Podia is really fairly simple, fairly friendly, fairly, fairly robust. Uh-huh. Um, there are a lot of things that make it not the right solution for me, but I generally like their vibe. I like yeah, their ethos, me too. the tool. The tool yeah. is good enough for okay. especially somebody who's beginner and not super tech savvy. Okay. Um, beyond that, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not entirely sure. That's cool. That's cool. That's good. Good to know. And uh, but you haven't looked at Simplero or Zendler, right? I, yeah, I haven't even heard of Zendler. Um, yeah, Zen, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a particular niche of people that are are using it, and um, Simplero is also a particular other niche of people. A lot of like coaches and and uh, anyway. So I thank you, thank you for really for for spending the time with me, and hopefully this is helpful for everybody. I will of course have links to Rob's um, membership, like I recommend it because I'm in it myself um, below, and and you know Rob's website and, and Twitter where we where we met, and um, uh, yeah. So if anybody has any questions, comment below. Uh, you know Rob and I can't can't be answering detailed questions here probably, but if you have any quick questions, brief ones, uh, I'll I'll try to help. Or if there's anything, I'll I'll, I'll tag. Uh, you know I'll bring in Rob in on it too. So. Come find me on Twitter is where I yes. spend an ungodly amount of time. It's, it's a little bit of a problem, but <laughs> you're super, um, you're, you're yeah. super friendly on Twitter. It's awesome. Really, really, really great. 
Rob, again, thank you. Mm. So glad to meet you. We're going to be friends for life. And for um, life. yeah, for sure. And um, so, yeah, um, we're, we're going to have another conversation actually uh, mm -hmm. soon to talk about your, your kind of your, your thoughts on marketing and your you know, other, other things you want to share. So, oh my goodness. God help yeah. us. <laughs> Thanks so nice. much, Rob. Yeah. My pleasure, man. It's great to meet you.